Hello and welcome to NewsClick. Very recently, the Central Bureau of Investigation and the Enforcement Directorate have filed a case against the Center for Promotion of Social Concerns and its program unit, the People's Watch, which are based from Tamil Nadu. They have been alleged of violating the Foreign Contributions Regulation Act and are being booked under two sections of the IPC as well. The organizations have been very vocal about the violations of human rights across the country and particularly from Tamil Nadu and have been involved in creating awareness among the public and college students on human rights. To discuss more on the background, we have with us Mr. Henry Tiffane, the Executive Director of People's Watch. Welcome, sir. Welcome. So to begin with, the CPSC and the People's Watch are, are being accused of violating the Foreign Contributions Regulation Act, FCRA 2010, and cases are being filed as per IPC 120B and 420. What is your uh, comments on this and uh, what do you think is the reason behind uh, the action taken now after a very long delay? Well, when the uh, CBI officers came to my office on the 8th with a search warrant, I uh, uh, warmly welcomed them and told them that they were 10 years late. They were exactly 10 years late. Now, when I told them they were 10 years late, I had something in mind. Unfortunately, I don't know whether they knew it. And uh, I told him, we are, we go by the rule of law and therefore we have to abide by the rule of law. You have come with a search warrant. I signed the search uh, order of the CBI, uh, of the CBI court. And I have no problem in uh, sharing with you documents. The only thing is that I will have to call my accountant today who's, who's physically not here because of some family uh, religious uh, ceremonies that day. They did complete the ceremonies fast and I did all these calls in front of them <coughs> so that they don't think that we are we are uh, we delay them like uh, some politicians delay different people uh, some um, force them to jump walls, some force them to 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 go into forests etc. He said we are here and um, Within one hour, I think they had all the documents that they wanted, and at least it was being downloaded from the uh, from the uh, lofts and uh, made available to them. They were quite happy with the cooperation they got. They seized about twelve documents and have uh, left, saying that they will come back again. And uh, even they come back, we will give them more documents as they please. But the problem is, and what is important is. Not that they came here and we cooperated. But they have come here after the government of Tamil Nadu had told them in July 2012 that they will be have to investigate the case. So there should have been an investigation by the government of Tamil Nadu and the government of, of the AIADMK will have to give us or give the public the knowledge of what they did from 2012 till 2020 when they were in power. And this is a parliament response by the Minister of State for Home Affairs who says so. And it is during their tenure that on 2-12-2020 as stated in the first information report which has been made available to the public by the CBI itself on its website that everybody knows that on the second 09 that was passed where the uh, additional chief secretary to government has uh, signed it by order of the governor approving the investigation of this case to be handed over to the CBI. Now you hand over to the CBI something that you cannot do but this Geo does not state what they have done from 2012 onwards till 2020. And that is what is disturbing for me. So you come 10 years late, you come with an FIR, and one you once and this was 2020, December. You take one year to register the FIR after the Geo. One year, or a little more than one year, and thereafter. You come with a, uh, the day you register your affair, then you start acting, uh, you know, very fast. 
So this is not something which is very interesting that way. Number one. Number two, sir. We were before the Delhi High Court. The Ministry of Home Affairs came to our office after our suspension in the month of July 2012. 2012. They came to our office on two occasions. Each time, five times, five people, five days, eight to eight. Very intensive work. And I appreciate them. They were always very polite. There was no lack of politeness from the officers who came to the field. We also provided them all the documents that they wanted. After all that, they have got falsity in their affair. Falsity in their affair. If I read the affair, I will be tearing it into pieces and therefore I don't want to talk about the affair. The, we were suspended on 16-7-2012 for the first time. We were thereafter suspended again. We were thereafter suspended again on February 18, 2013. And yet a third time on 16th of September 2013. Each suspension is 180 days. Now the law is very clear, sir. In 2020, the legislation said one suspension of 180 days. The ministry gave us three suspensions. One after another. Today in 2020, the act has been amended to make way for two suspensions. But I already suffered three suspensions. During the period of the third suspension, sir, I went to the Supreme Court. I went to the Delhi High Court. Why did I go to the Delhi High Court? Because the Ministry of Home Affairs is within the jurisdiction of the Delhi High Court. And therefore, there, I got an order in 2014, on the 9th of May 2014, which I have with me here, which I can make available to you, where the court says, in the meantime, if no fresh suspension has been passed under Section so the petitioner shall be at liberty to operate its bank account, so on, so on, so on. So. Now, if I have a person who, uh, who commits crimes of conspiracy, cheating, and um, transgressing the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, would the court say this? The court has repeated it on the 16th of September, sorry, July 2014. And I read para, para 4, which is very interesting to you. Para 4, which I hope you'll be able to see there, which says, moreover, Ministry of Home Affairs dated in their communication dated 10th of June 2014 directed ministry directed the branch manager of the above mentioned bank that in compliance of the order of 95 which I showed you earlier the foreign contribution designated bank account so and so of center for promotion of social concerns may be allowed to be operated it's not a court order it's an order of the Ministry of Home Affairs Hey, what is this? Who's playing? Who's playing hot and cold? Here in 14, 2014, you permit me. First court permitted me. You say you have no objection. And that is how the writ petition that we filed challenging the three suspensions was closed. So if I have been somebody who has, who has committed an offense and a criminal law, my goodness me, should they not have said it in court in a counter? Is it that bad a Ministry of Home Affairs that we have? Is it that negligent a Foreign Contribution Regulation Act unit that we have in the Ministry? I'm sorry, sir. I don't like to speak poorly of the efficiency of my government. But that is what, I, what it is. Therefore, my bank accounts were operated in 14. Operated fully in 15. Operated fully in 16 till 29th of October 2010. 2016, when our renewal certificate was prevented. I therefore went back to court challenging the renewal certificate. Now, when I filed a repetition in 2016, the first thing the government has to do is to ensure that they file a counter in the court. Instead of that, what they did, very interestingly, they were in a syndrome of suspension. Suspension to CPSC, suspension to CPSC, suspension to CPSC were three. Now is the fourth suspension to CPSC. So I asked them, 
Are when there is FCRA, you can suspend. But when there is no FCRA granted on the 29th of October by your order, what are you suspending? And we filed a red petition and immediately they gave a withdrawal. I don't know whether you can see it. Withdrawal of show cause notice and suspension on the 17th of May and the red petition that I filed came to a close thereby. After which they filed a counter, sir. Now, what will you expect in the counter, sir? You will expect something financial, no? The counter reads as follows. In the year 2011-2013, and I've got it here. I'm not making it up. It is their counter. And I will also show you that it has been signed by the deponent here, who is an undersecretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs. Now, on the 17th of January 2017, and there they say, sir, and which is most important, they say the truth comes out here. In the year 2011 to 2013, Henry Defane, Executive Director, People's Watch, was noticed to be receiving foreign contributions. What is this for you to notice? It is, it is there on the website. Before the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act wanted us to put our receipts for 10 years in advance, we had our accounts on the website of People's Watch. I was inspired by Aruna Roy. I was inspired by the ordinary poor people of Rajasthan who fought for the Right to Information Act. And I said, as a rights activist, if they can do this, then as an NGO, which is not covered by the RTI Act, I must put my accounts, which are audited, on the website. The government demanded it in 2010. I did it much earlier. And I'm proud of it. Nobody asked me to do it. And he says, he was found, Hindi Defense was found to be providing material and information to the UN Special Rapporteurs and the US Embassy and British High Commission officials portraying India's poor, India's human rights record in negative light on the basis of that funding. You don't need funding, sir, to write a letter to the United Nations. Today, even attending United Nations meetings, I don't need to fly to Geneva. You do it online. All our communication with the special rapporteurs are always by email. I don't need any funding to do that. But unfortunately, the ministry's officials are so poorly informed that they put this in writing and make my government a, 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 a laughing stock in the international sphere. Then they say, further Hindi Defense was using foreign contribution to the detriment of India's image. By using foreign money, he marked himself and his organization, CPSC, as a defender of human rights. I don't need foreign money to start to make me a defender. My dear friend, from 2012 onwards till today, 2,600 days my foreign FCRA account has been closed. Except for the period when I got a court order opening it. Have I stopped working for human rights? 600 complaints have filed before the NHRC on behalf of defenders, which also include journalists. Did I need foreign money for that? I need an email, I need an investigating, and I need people like you to support across the country. And of course, it is put in my name, not because I do the work, because I'm willing to take the blame. That's all. I don't do the work. There are many people like you in different parts of the country who do the work. That is the protection of human rights work that has to be done. Therefore, this is the reason why the FCR event this is the same reason now, in spite of not having FCR, we cannot control this step. We will give him a CBA case, is the price I've got in 2022. I'm happy to take this as a challenge because we are people of tough character. Not because we want to be rude, not because we want to be arrogant, not because we want not something goes into our head. We always need to be humble, but we need to be powerful. We need to be truthful. We need to be credible. And that we will continue till the end. And if they think that their CBA investigation will stop me talking, I'm sorry. That is a wrong strategy. They'll have to try something else. What is sad, sir, is my trustees who trust us are very, very important people. Our trustee up to 2012 was Mr. Venugopal IAS, who happened to be the personal secretary to Prime Minister uh, 
VP Singh and resigned from that position. He was later NHRC special rapporteur. Now he has been made an accused because he was a trustee during that period. Mr. Binum Kotari, a UN special rapporteur formerly of, on housing, is a, is a present trustee. Mr. P. V. Rajagopal of, of, of uh, Ekta Parishad, who led the, the land rights march up to Agra, you remember that person with lakhs and lakhs of Adivasis, he is a trustee. I have a number of college professors who are trustees. A number of lawyers who are trustees. I have a trade unionist and you being from Tamil Nadu, you will know Mr. Muta Krishnamurti, Professor Muta Krishnamurti. He is known only as Muta Krishnamurti because he was the Secretary General of the Madurai University Teachers Association. He is a trustee. I am the President of the YMCA, National YMCA formerly, Mr. R. Satyamurti as, as a trustee. I have a retired professor of Tamil, Dr. I. Devasagayam, as one of my trustees. I can go on on this list. But what is most important is that they are all made accused today. Is that fair? Is that fair for people of this, this repute who have come out to stand for human rights? Is this what they want? I am sorry. We are cutting a sorry figure. It's cutting a very sorry figure. You, you have any quarrels with me? You, you do anything to me? Don't do it to my trustees. And because of these trustees and because we had a chartered accountant of, of the best caliber in the country, Dr. M. Kandasamy, that our accounts are above board. And I will say this at the top of a hat. And I want to tell you, sir, our business of transparency and accountability cannot match the FCRA. I used to, before the bank account was closed, every year have a committee of concerned citizens in Madurai city to whom we all used to own our bank account. The bank every year. They were professors. Some of them were members of parliament. Later became members of parliament. Mr. Viswanathan, who later became a member of parliament of, of uh, Sri Paramudur constituency of the Congress party. He was in Madurai, was a member. Lots of people were members. Former IAS, former IPS, former national NHRC Secretary General, former Home Ministry uh, Secretary, uh, all of them were members. Not to see accounts, to see account books. Accounts, audited accounts were presented, but account books were presented along with vouchers. Who does that, sir? Who does that? Can you ask me one NGO in Tamil Nadu? One NGO in Tamil Nadu who opened their vouchers opened their vouchers, opened their salary slips, who opened their income tax paid, who opened the PF paid. And all these are people who are in government positions and therefore they used to make recommendations. And my, my accounts unit will say, sir, over time we are asking for these people. Each time they are giving us new, new ideas, which means more work for us. I said, the higher standards of accounting is what protects the human rights organization. So we are not somebody who can indulge in the type of accusations made against us. The ED came, the enforcement directorate came, asked for my wife's account, my daughter's account, my wife, uh, my, my son-in-law's account and my account. We gave all that. I've got the love and affection and the support and solidarity of people of my state and the country. That is extremely costly. That is the sotu I have. And I'm proud I have that. We don't need to do frauds like this to take money which is given to us as trustees in trusteeship to do human rights work. My human rights work of taking human rights to our schools in our state was stopped, sir. Not in Tamil Nadu alone. 22 states. Has the government, has the NHRC done it? Has any state human rights commission done it? With all humility, I say we did it. Continue to do it, sir, because we believe this is our duty, fundamental duty under 51A of the Constitution. We will. Then you proceed against us. We have no problem. We will face it. That is the cost one has to pay if the Constitution and the rights in our Constitution are to be protected. The CPAC and People's Watch have raised their voice against uh, 
the violations of human rights and have played a very crucial role in several incidents in uh, Tamil Nadu as well. Do you think that your proactive, proactive role is uh, being a reason for being targeted by the government or the government organizations? Well, uh, I think the question is posed to the wrong person, but I had an answer. In 2012, they told me you had supported the Kudungulam protest. I thought it is the, the worst thing that could be told to me. The Kudungulam protest for those who accused me at that time was carried on by thousands of women, thousands of fisher women. They are the they are the vanguards of the anti kudamuram protest. It may have succeeded, it may not have succeeded. Don't forget that alternative sources of energy in Tamil Nadu, which the Adanis are, are, are coming to invest, the movement towards that came from the protest of Kudamuram. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. I went to Kudamuram. Yes, they asked me when they came for investigation, did you go? I said, yes, I went. When did you go? I said, I went on 17th of September. He said, how is it that you remember? I said, sir, for you, dates doesn't matter. For me, it matters. On the 10th of September, the Tamil Nadu police killed seven Dalits in a firing in Paramagodi. On the 11th of September, Uday Kumar, my good friend Uday Kumar, launched this protest on one day and then he continued it from the 11th onwards. And I heard that 200 women were on a fast unto death and they had drips on the stage of Kudamura, I was very moved. I said, people cannot die for protesting. I called Nidumaranaya. I called Mr. P. Nidumaran. And I told him, Ayya, I'm going there. I'm going to see. And if it is somebody who has been forced into a protest, will you come if they want to close their protest to come and give them the lime juice? He said, Henry, you go there and then come and report to me. I'll be there. Sure, I'll be there. I went to Kodagunam, sir, on the 17th of September. Why 17? Because for seven days I was in Paramagudi. I went on the 17th and to my shock and surprise, sir, I saw that there were 200 men, women on the, on the stage. There were many who had drips, but there were 20,000 women gathered in front of them. I said, what a big fool I am. We all think we know great things. There were 20,000 women who were protesting. They did not need a Henry Define there to protect them. They knew how to protect them better. I came back. That was my visit to Kodamuram. If they wanted my FCRA, why should they use Kodamuram as an excuse? What did I do in Kodamuram? Did Kodamuram people need our money? Did Kodamuram people need our legal assistance? Did Kodamuram people need to know how to struggle because of us? They carried on their peaceful protest and they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are patriots for what they did. So that was a false. So what was the truth? I did not know that this was the truth, but there, later I came to know that the RAW, the Research and Analysis Wing, had an entry in, in my file in the Ministry of Home Affairs. And the entry was what my association with the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights Defenders, Margaret Sagakia, who visited India from the 1st to the 11th of January 2012, sorry, 2011. And she came out with the report. And I took her, I took her to Gujarat, Modi was Chief Minister there. She went to Jammu, she went to Srinagar, she was in Delhi, she was in Bhuvaneshwar, she was in Kolkata. She was in Gawati. In Gawati, she met the brother of Iram Sharmira, who had conducted a 16-year struggle against Afspa. The report was a strong report. Of course, very difficult for the government to stomach. The second, the National Human Rights Commission in the year 2011 had to submit its report for accreditation to the Global Alliance of National Human Rights Institutions. We came out with an alternative report on the National Human Rights Commission. I'm just trying to see whether it falls into my, into my eye somewhere, but it doesn't. And that alternative report was released in the Constitution Club by none other than Justice Varma, a former chairperson of the NHRC. 
Of course, the NHRC had difficult times after that. And a member of the NHRC, who was a former police officer, who was turned, who had who served two terms, one term under recommended by Vajpayee's ministry, second term recommended by Manmohan Singh's ministry. This was the gentleman who wanted to teach Hindu Defain a lesson and ensure that the FCRA went ahead. That was the reason, sir. So, if they thought that they could shut my mouth, they realized in the years that they cannot shut my mouth. I am nobody compared to the thousands of people who continue to be in prison, sir. And I think people like us have to humble ourselves and humble our work when looking at the Adivasis, the Dalits, the Muslims of our country and the intellectuals who are called ur urban axles today who are in prison and who die in prison. I am nothing, nothing compared to them. And therefore, there is much more to be done. To do what the NHRC refuses to do. To do what the 179 national and state human rights institutions of our country are negligent of not doing. It's our duty to do that. And we, we are inspired by leaders. We are inspired. You see behind me, KG Kannabaran. We are inspired by personalities like him. And Bala Gopal, who is below, and my mother, who is there, these are our source of inspiration to continue a hard but committed, inspiring life of protecting the rights of the poorest of the poor. And at any cost, we will do it, sir.